finna get right with inside advice. Some ill entertainment, industry insight. Listen, it's like sitting, building up on the yard. H.U., the bison chats, the vanguard. H.U., you know. Ah! What is up? Welcome to the yard, and this is the bison chat. I'm your host, Rod Email a graduate of Howard University. The Bison Chats is a podcast where an H.U. Bison, that's me, interviews another H.U. Bison in the entertainment industry. The, this podcast is in association with the Kelly R. Griffin Bison Project. From Howard to Hollywood, cycle to a feature film project that will be written, produced, directed, and starring H.U. Bison. That is synergy for your ass. If you hear any gurgling or pouring, that means it's noon on somebody's college campus and we're doing some social drinking in here. Don't forget, the Bison Chats are interactive. Play the Bison Chats drinking game in which each and every time you hear the word bison, you take a shot of an alcoholic beverage. Alcoholic, not juice, not water, alcohol. So get your drink, get your shot glass. Bison, 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 bison. Catch the fuck up. (laughs) On today's Bison Chats, we have a Howard graduate no doubt a Howard graduate, but an Emmy-nominated, Image Award-winning producer. This man got his start in sports, working numerous live events such as the NBA All-Star Game, the WNBA, the NBA Finals, and multiple Super Bowls. Did you attend the one with the Saints? Yes. Damn. No, I did not attend the, the Super Bowl with the Saints. Oh, that that kind of hurt me. I did attend the Super Bowl in New Orleans. Yes, you did. Okay. not with the Saints. That works out, too. You have worked in <laughs> unscripted. Entertainment like Sports Unfiltered with Dennis Miller. That must be interesting. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so you think you can dance. BET's American Gangsta Unsung, which is a favorite of mine. Um, the new series Inside the Label, which you just did something on Terror Squad? Yes. I just uh-huh. did Terror Squad episode. And the Emmy-nominated Sharp Focus Journey to Canton, the story of NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. That was good. That was good. Uh, you, you also, you. I just saw some stuff online. You worked at you know, doing something with this Sprite Celebrity All Star Game. Yeah, I just uh, finished uh, producing on the uh, Celebrity Basketball Game for BET, which was uh, quite an experience. Uh, we're producing an event as well as a live stream, and then cutting it down to an hour show. Oh, so interesting! And you also are a native of Irvine, California. Let me welcome to the yard, Mr. Marcus Miles. Thank you. Girl. Glad to be with you all. Yes, I'm from Orange County. There are brothers and sisters there. I got to ask you about that. I'm not going to lie because my aunt and uncle live. Well, they were on Pen- Camp Pendleton or whatever. And okay. uh, yeah, Ir- Irvine is as I, as I, when I first got here because I'm not here from originally. The Orange Curtain, that's what they call it. I don't know. That's what I'm That's talking. my first time here. In okay, I heard behind the Orange Curtain. But yeah, you are a native um, of, of Irvine, uh, California. So what's good with you, Marcus? Uh, you do whose life story are you doing today? Kobe, Tim Duncan, who's next? Who are you working with? Uh, <laughs> actually, um, I'm actually in the process of producing a uh, unsung episode on Bobby Blue Bland. So that's oh. the story that I'm uh, currently working on right now. I just spent a little time in Memphis uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, we're uh, knocking out that story for the oh, next season of Unsung. I, I have to say, our interns have no idea who that is. So Bobby Blue Bland uh, <laughs> is. A blues R&B artist. Now, you may know Bobby Blue Bland by Jay-Z's cover, or, or his uh, remake of um, Ain't No Heart and the Love of the City on the Blueprint album. Yes. So, most I people do. might know him by that. I know him from hearing his moaning and wailing through my house as a child from my parents. So, yes, <laughs> I I cannot wait to tell my parents, you need to watch Unsung by Bobby Blue Bland. And um, you'll hear an interesting story of how that scowl came about, because it's been said that he was... It was uh, uh, C.L. Franklin who inspired him, but uh, one of our old school drummers, Jabo Starks, uh, has a different story. <laughs> oh, okay. And have you done any other unsungs? I have. I have uh, done uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band and uh, Ike Turner. You did those? Yes. Oh, man. So, yeah, so Ike Turner actually was my first episode that I produced, so they threw me in there. Uh, oh, in the fire. In oh, the my. fire. 
Wait, having wait. a hug and console and really get the family to trust what we were going to do with uh, the Ike Turner story. So yeah, because yeah. yeah, I could only you had to be very delicate with that. You, you. very delicate. <laughs> I, had, I had shout out to the family. I definitely had some conversations with them about how he was going to be perceived and how the story was going to be told, and we're all still friends to this day. Wow. <laughs> And you know what? It was a very balanced. It was. Yeah. I, re- I remember that. I was like, when I say Ike Turner, I said, oh, man, this is going to be. <laughs> I, I either Tina pissed. I was like, I was like this is going to be something, man. That, man, that's all right, man. Um, let's, let's talk about your Howard days. What got you to Howard? Family member? The girl? You lose a bet? Uh, I went to visit some cousins that lived in, that went to Howard um, when I was in high school. And Where'd you just, go to high school? I went to University High School in Irvine. My cousin went to University High School, but in uh, Irvine or in, LA or San in Diego, Irvine. Oh, okay. in Irvine, because I remember because I couldn't believe you. All. She said that's how you had two gyms, and, yeah, and a, and a and a French building. I said, no, you can't have a French building, right? A, <laughs> your high school looks like a college. It does. <laughs> it lie. is not. It is called University High for a reason. Okay, so continue. yeah, my parents went. My parents worked at UC Irvine, so that's how we ended up in Irvine. Okay, um, and so. Being there and being in a, uh, you know, I was the president or uh, vice president and then appointed the president of the Black Student Union at my high school. So uh, a lot of the students um, from my church as well as um, kids in my high school were going attending HBCUs, and so I, I'm just, I'm, uh, you had it was that big of a school where you had you had you had a Black Student Union in high school. It wasn't that it was that it was but, yeah it was a big it was you know two thousand kids that went to the school. Lot, a lot of kids. So you know <laughs> of that we had a okay. small percentage of. Okay. Black students, you know, my parents took us on, you know, college tours, and my dad used to work at Morehouse before he was, you know, wow. as well, and my mom worked at Spelman, so um, obviously, you know, higher education was instilled at us, and then my my dad attended the HBCU, and so that was just something that he went to where uh, he went to University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Yes, okay. So yeah, so it was, you know, just something that I had friends, and like I said, friends church members who mm-hmm. uh, attended these schools and so that was just something being from you know orange county when you when it's time to graduate you want to experience a different a little different you know, flavor. a little different flavor <laughs> a little different you know area you know the east coast as well as um uh the i was drawn to it because you know i always always wanted to do entertainment and so being that i wanted to go to a historical black college howard obviously had uh, one of the top programs you know um in radio tv film and so that's what brought me to the school. Wow. Um, you don't have to say when you graduated, but the Howard Hotel, was it a bookstore or was it an actual hotel when you were there? It was a bookstore. I graduated in 2003. Okay. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what freshman dorm did you stay in? I was in Carver, and then I was in... Wow. Wait, Carver? So she started, they started you out in Carver? Yeah, they had, I was in Carver, and then I also, the rest of my time, I was at the Towers. Oh my God! You had a so you had a single from day one. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to look. I know this is I know this is a podcast. I'm just I am. I'm kind of jealous. Like like oh damn. God. Like they didn't send you to Drew. They said no. Nah, we're gonna send you to Carver. Let you have yeah, a single. A of, there was a lot of you didn't have to deal with no meeting somebody like some troublesome child who can't wash or some shit like that. No. Damn. No. Damn. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have AC while you're in um, Carver? Uh, I had AC, correct. So you went budget unit. But there was, I think there was a situation with like AC where like they only turned it on like you know what's what's it called like Indian summer when it gets hot Wait, in October. So you mean they they put AC in Carver? Yeah, they had AC in there. Damn. <laughs> I am hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sorry. They, they uh, let me, like a let me move on. Here. I got <laughs> my producer looking on. at me like, you know, you need to stop being all in your feelings and move on. Like, damn, I'm getting hurt. Like, with some things that I missed at Howard. Um, your major was obviously communications with radio, TV, film. Correct. Okay. Um, so you knew what you wanted to go in from day one, like you said earlier. I know. I took classes when I was in high school, uh, video production classes, and uh, that just kind of sparked my my interest. Uh, See, I could do I this. Thing. I can, I could take a check for this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know it wasn't too many things that I was interested in when I was you know in in high school, and so I just drew to that, and so I figured I had an opportunity to work with a couple people and saw what they were the making. Girls are entertainment doing and it. pimping is illegal. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Um, did you have a favorite professor while you were there? Um, I guess one who I still keep in touch with to this day, um, 
Professor Sonia Williams. She was a screenwriting professor and okay. the chair when I left. She was the chair of the department. Oh, okay. Um, another professor that was good, um, Professor Don Marbury. He actually was my the last semester there. He had taught this first course on like uh, I. I kind of forget what the name of the class was, but I know we put together like a proposal and a presentation at the end of it, like something that we can easily pitch. Okay. And then um, he brought in guest speakers and had, you know, people on the phone that worked in the industry. So I think that was beneficial because you got to ask questions of people who actually worked in the business Mm -hmm. and kind of got a sense of, you know, what to expect. I got to slip it in, Bison. Bison, I know you're drinking out there. I know you're drinking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Were you in a fraternity? I was not. End of story. Uh, we can go bison me, again. Me find me. <laughs> Let us talk about your Howard to Hollywood story. The day, what happened? The day you got that degree is like, uh-oh, I'm a goddamn adult. What got you here? Well, well, I mean, you already are from well, California. Well, I knew when everybody that I went to school with knew that when I graduated, I was coming back home. So I felt like that gave me kind of an advantage for some who weren't from here because at least I knew, all right, I can go back home and stay with my mom and dad and, uh-huh. and you know, until something popped off. And so in school, I interned a lot. I interned my last year, I interned on part of the interruption around the horn. Really? Um, I used to do Wizards games for NBC. Um, what else did I do? Uh, I actually did a NBA All Star game in Philly when I was still in school. I actually had to like politic my way into that because professors were like, "Oh, you want to go leave for a week?" So I had to politic for a week to say, "This is what I'm going to go do." And then so a you got you talk me, you talk to professor saying, "I want to go intern I, at, at the NBA All Star game for a week." Did <laughs> a week. In Philly, during what was the year was that? Two thousand one or two thousand two? I think it was because that's when um, Kobe won. Did Kobe win the MVP that year? I don't remember. Um, Jordan was on the Wizards because I definitely remember okay. being in the locker room and he dropped his wallet right in front of me and I just looked at him, just thought about how much money might be. <laughs> <laughs> But Dad, uh, John just touched his wallet, man. But uh, <laughs> I, I was a utility. One of my mentors, uh, Eddie Okuno, he's a tech manager for. Uh, ESPN. He got me on because uh, I went to school with his son, and um, I realized then that utility wasn't what I wanted to do because we was pulling cable in the cold. But um, it was a good opportunity, so I made enough money that week to last me the rest of the semester. And then I had to write some papers about it from my professor Damn. wanted me to have me, you know, you talk made, about your experience of being away for a yeah, week. That's a, that's a hell of a week right there. Yeah, <laughs> but for a college student, you know, you let that stretch. So that's it wasn't true, like okay. it was a ton of money, but uh-huh. for a college student, you know. And so when I graduated, I had all of these different sports connections because I did, you know, so much stuff during school. So it was kind of a natural fit. I just kind of fell into, you know, doing uh, sports and so one of the things that I learned obviously coming out was it's all about who you know this business and I tell you students all about who you know who you know <laughs> make sure you network while you in school so when you get out of school you got somebody you could call that can give you a job that's about the bottom line and so know. I literally had one of my friends she went to Hampton um, she's like oh you should talk to my mom I said, talk to your mom. What does your mom do? Her mom was a VP of uh, diversity at Fox. And oh. so the day I came graduate, that I graduated on a, was a Saturday before Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, I was back in L.A. And I had an interview at Best Damn Sports Show. And that was just all because she set it up because of the relationship and the connection. So that was important of, you know, who you know. Mm-hmm. I did not get the job, but I learned a lot about obviously the business um i ended up going on the, the the diversity department was trying to get me jobs everywhere i had went on interviews on all different kinds of places and stuff like that and nothing really stuck and then finally i got a call from one of the people that worked in the office was like i gave your resume to this guy he called me I never met this dude and he said look a buddy of mine who worked at fox who was a producer is getting ready to uh just got hired to uh, basically launch the nfl network I gave him your resume, so expect to get, expect a call. This dude lives in Sacramento. I remember he lived in Sacramento, but 
and I had never met, and I wish I could have kept in touch with him and, you know, obviously thanked him. Um, and there was another person who called me, too, and said, hey, I gave your resume to a contact of mine at NFL Network. So I get an interview at NFL Network. I meet with two people there, the executive producer and the production manager, and both of them are talking to me about the two different people that referred me. So I ended up getting two referrals to this job from two different people, and then that's how I got in at the NFL Network in 2003, uh, six months after I graduated. So that's six months I was like, man, am I ever going to get a job? I just got finished. I just graduated. and <laughs> I had this question where it's like, what was the moment that changed your career? So I guess that would be that kind of sets your career on a, tra- a trajectory, right? I yeah, mean, because now after getting a job at NFL, now it's like, okay. Because I kind of had aspirations of doing scripted stuff as well, but I had a lot of sports on my, on my resume. Mm-hmm. And so I just knew, all right, well, I'm about to – be doing, you know, I'm going to be uh, working in sports and the NFL network was launching. And so I was one of the original people that got hired there. So it was a, you know, a, a good opportunity. That wow, just you were ground zero. Ground zero. So and that just kicked off me working in sports television. Okay. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause that's, uh, I guess that's the thing I wanted to say. Like, I think some people, and I hope people are listening, like there are moments, everybody gets thinking, oh, I did this all by myself. There are moments that can change your life that you take. For granted, don't take for granted. Like somebody might open, I don't know, open a back door and let you into something that you meet the right person. Somebody, you know, you never know. You never know. Because I remember during that time when I was right after I graduated, I had an interview at the Bernie Mac show. I met with the production management and they were like, oh, yeah, you're great. This is great. Yeah, we're going to call you, let you know. You know, I'm thinking I got this job. And then during that time while I was waiting on them, I had an interview at this other show, some show on MTV. Same situation. Oh, you're great. We're going to call you and let you know. So I'm waiting for these two job offers to come. Uh-huh. And then uh, I get a phone call. All right. I call to follow up. Like, hey, I haven't heard back. Just want to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a, uh, another offer at MTV. Mm-hmm. This was I called to be the uh, Bernie Mac show, folks. And they told me, you know, um, the executive producer wants to hire somebody that they worked with before. So we're not going to be able to do it. So. Like, you know, we're just going to let tell you you should take the other position that came your way. So I was like, oh, that was my first taste of how the business works in terms of like, <laughs> oh, this is all about who you know. Uh-huh. And then I called the MTV people to follow up with them because I'm like, all right, you know, well, that's the route I'm going to go. And they told me the exact same thing. Yeah, the executive producer. I brought, so then that's when I was like, ah, oh, uh-huh. this business is all about who you know. So then I get a, a job at the NFL Network because somebody I didn't know referred me to the man in charge. It's like that it your life like, is your life is different yeah, now so because I was of just, that. Yeah, so I was just like, I understand it. So when that stuff happens now in the business, it's like you just know, you just gotta expect it and understand that. You and, you, and the thing is, you never know. You yeah. just don't know. I mean, you didn't think nothing of it. You thought no. nothing of it, and then suddenly it's like, wait, twelve years later, I'm producing. I'm, yeah. I just got an Emmy nomination mm-hmm. <laughs> for right. producing sports. It's like I remember. I was like, man, I don't want to do. Man, I'm yeah. going to the Bernie Mac show. You know, what yes. I mean? <laughs> and they got a lot of resumes. Once I got hired there, everybody was like, "Oh, I'm trying to get in there. Oh, I'm trying to get in there. I'm trying to get in there." And so, you know, it was a blessing. So you got in, and from there, what? I mean, you just started. You yeah. Just so start from producing. there, I started working on um, the sick flagship show, NFL Total Access. Um, uh, that was basically the only show on the network at the time. Um, working on that kind of really getting a sense of live TV. Mm-hmm. Live TV is a different uh, a different beast. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a different beast. It's not Everybody's not cut to do live TV. It can be very stressful. Meaning as far as behind the camera or on, uh, in both. front of the camera? Both. In front and behind, but behind the scenes especially because if it's a live show, you mess up the viewership. They know. What was your title? Uh, when I first started, I was a production assistant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to say yeah, Nate, but what? Is that what? Is that why Emmett's gone? <laughs> Emmett, was it Emmett? Emmett on the? Oh other? yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> tell you that straight up. Yeah, that's probably why he's gone. You know that guy asked me one time, me and another producer, a uh, production assistant, we're cutting the Monday Night Highlight, we're in the edit bay, and he came in and asked if we can go get him some chicken. I looked at him like, "Do you see? We're trying to make air." Like, Are you serious? So my my coworker went and told. She was like, "This man just came in and asked us to go get some chicken, and we're cutting this highlight, and we're oh, she was hot." That's yeah. funny. He, yeah, that was Hall of one. Famer. 
Hall of Famer, Famer Emmett. He didn't understand that he did actually was doing some work and it was yeah. So I'm sure some other people who worked in sports will have some. Yeah, you know, you give me too. some chicken, man. Um, yeah. I know y'all doing something with that TV over there. Yeah, <laughs> and them, them them buttons put uh. <laughs> I sure could go for a three piece from Popeyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> So doing live TV was definitely, you know, an interesting eye opener opportunity, you know, just being a part of of that. And so, you know, I was able to experience a lot of stuff. And then from there, moving into doing uh, features. Um, and then I ended up I ended up leaving the NFL because I just got stressed out with doing mm -hmm. live TV. OK. Um, and then I had a taste of doing, you know, features and documentaries. I got to work on um, uh, this documentary we did called the, the History of the Black Quarterback. You did that? Um, yeah, this was... That's a good piece, bro. Yeah, back in uh, 2000. We started in 06, and then it aired in two, uh, uh, Black History Month 2007. Um, so, yeah, so it was... it was From there, that's when I realized I wanted to do documentaries and tell, do tell stories. Um, what skills... I got two questions. What skills helped you the most coming out of school? Also, what was your first piece at... Um, that doesn't sound good, but your first piece at the NFL Network, <laughs> <laughs> your first piece you produced at the NFL Network. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I was working on a daily show, so I was cutting all kinds of stuff, like the show open. Are you on a like, daily show too? Well, no, not the Daily Show. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. Well, like, yeah. NFL Total okay, Access NFL is, is a okay, Daily okay, Show. I'm sorry, so, okay, yes. Yeah. yeah, you're correct. I'm yeah, sorry. Well, you so, said that's like the Daily so Show. So I was, so, you know, we do, we're doing day of pieces and cutting uh -huh. stuff for the show okay. and that kind of thing. Um, the first like piece piece that I like feature piece that I cut um, that I produced on my by myself was that we did a P Antonio Pierce had a football camp in Compton and we did a story on uh, on that which was funny because when you when I think about it I think I was probably the only person that they were gonna ask to go to Compton to do this piece yeah. so it Marcus. was a. <laughs> Hey, we I want mean, to talk to you. Can we talk to you, Marcus? I just can we get to go to Compton? I'll keep it. I just <laughs> Chad, that's, Kobe, you know, Marcus. That's how it felt. Uh, but it was good. You know, I took it. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll go. And I had relatives in Compton, so it wasn't mm -hmm. like something I wasn't used to, yeah, you know, being around. And they were like, so, we thought so. We thought so, Marcus. Get in how you fit in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's the diversity angle, take it, man. Uh, <laughs> um,. But you've done other unscripted stuff. I mean, you've worked with Dennis Miller. Well, yeah. So um, once I uh, – so I was staff in the NFL Network, um, and then I decided to leave, and then I had the opportunity to work on American Gangster. So I did mm -hmm. that before I did Dennis Miller. So working on – going from live TV to working on doc documentary productions is a whole different speed. The pace just slowed yeah, down. Yeah, the pace it was good slow. to slow like, down. I remember being, like, in the editing, like – uh, supervising producer was like, "Yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna take us a month to edit this." And I was like, "A month? I had. I'm used to like doing edits where you turn around stuff in a day or a couple of days. So, mm -hmm. um, so it was interesting being a part of that. It was a very, very slow process, um, but it was. You know, that series was kind of rewarding because it was an interesting series in terms of being able to tell um, <clears throat> certain stories. So I was an associate producer. Oh, you just make sure we talking about gangster, right? American gangster. Okay. Yeah, so um, I was social producer Any specific on that series. Episodes you? I worked on Chaz Williams, mm -hmm. um, which is funny because he ended up suing BET after that, or like later, recently. <laughs> but Gang that's another gangsters story. have issues. Yeah, <laughs> gangsters have issues. But, so I can um, portray them. What else did I work on? Philly Black Mafia, and I also did um, Larry Hoover. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I worked on you know those episodes. Um, interesting, you know. So it was it was kind of at first it was you have known criminals like calling your off your desk <laughs> to like tell you we got photos that we're gonna license, you know, let you license, and so it was kind of interesting working on that series. We had a, a scare at one point where some people weren't happy with a show, and like then the office started locking the doors during the day. <laughs> it was funny though because one of the uh, one another social producer I sat next to, she was just like, listen. If y'all, if you lay down with fleas, you're going to get bit. Why y'all acting like, you know, so people were <laughs> nervous <laughs> about certain episodes, uh, you know, once they aired. But it was a good series, you know. It was, I think, 
It did well for BET for three seasons. It did. And um, some, then the problems came. We said, you know what? We're going to lay this motherfucker to yeah, rest. It was, <laughs> it's, yeah. It was, it was a tough one. I, I remember one time having a, a police detective telling me that there was one subject we were doing, and that person was probably still involved with consulting on uh, – criminal activity and I'm like wow he just called my desk so yeah. it's like hey Thanks. Marcus we just want to let you know the gentleman that you're interviewing he's still a known criminal and yeah. you know things could happen so, <laughs> yeah A Smith was the is a production company that produced that that series and so from there I worked on uh, UFC uh, documentary show and then sports unfiltered that you mentioned so my sports background got me on you know it was just a natural fit for me had, um, on that when you were Dennis Miller had he Gone right, and oh yeah, he, he had gone right, right but, but, it he wasn't, he... but it wasn't like uh, I think he had his radio. He had his radio show for sure. Okay, um, but he wasn't like you know just you know preaching. Like, yeah, like, he never seemed to be a preacher, but yeah. I remember when he when he went yeah, right. He definitely, he had his radio. Seemed show. like right after um, his uh, Monday night yeah. football stint. Is yeah, like, the he... issues with that show is the fact that he lived in Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and like they wouldn't, he wouldn't come to L.A., so we had to film the show in Santa Barbara, <laughs> and so. That was just the hassle going up there every week to film the show in this like photo studio that we turned into. They turned into a, a TV studio, which was <laughs> had one bathroom for all the crew. Are you serious? <laughs> His old truck. And it was you just, got like thirty something. It there. was an old. We had an old production truck. It was just yeah, but it was you know it was a good experience. I learned a lot working on that. And hey, what was that? What, what network was that for? That was for Versus. <laughs> yeah. I, if anybody don't come down to LA, yeah, you come to Santa to Barbara. That's special. That was one story is funny. We had a PA and our the showrunner had him go back and forth to Santa Barbara like three times one day. Like, oh my man. god! He had to drop <laughs> one day. Tape. He had to drop some tapes off, and he got back like, "Hey, we need you to come back. You forgot a tape." And then he got there, and he was like, "Oh, we need you Dude, to take a, this to Dennis." It that's was, an hour trip. It was. It's that's more a, than an hour. It's, it's an hour. Like, Santa Barbara's yeah. almost two hour drive. I'm being yeah. nice, but I'm just like, yeah. yeah, that's a long trip to make three you times. Three times. He did it three times. Time. 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 That night, at night, he was like, "I want to come back. Can I just come in the morning?" And he came in the morning. It's a pretty drive, but I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, but ain't that pretty? Yeah. Back to the skills that. What skills helped you? As oh, far as sorry, I didn't answer is. that question. Skills that helped me, the number one skill that helped me was networking. And I learned that from one of my uh, cousins who attended Howard. And one of the reasons why I ended up at Howard, she would say, make sure you network, network, network. Because that was the most important thing, you know, in terms of just kind of moving forward in your career is networking. Um, <clears throat> another uh, uh, skill set, I would say, is once I got into the business, it was just kind of... Um, establishing myself as a producer who was able to like uh, easily work with talent because there's a lot of talent that are hard to you know deal with um and so that has become something that i've kind of known in general for. so in general um, it's like you need to be able to work with people yeah because but just, that's, there's know. some talent that's just kind of just ridiculous and so you just kind of have a certain temperament and know how to deal with that entertainment certain, you have to basically you have yeah. to have patience yeah, that certain that certain entertainer, that athlete or whatnot. So those were the you know the two things, and they, even to this day, like I'm that's the first thing I promote for myself is I have talent produced Warren Sapp, I have talent produced Michael Irvin, I have uh, <laughs> that must be interesting. Is. I have uh, worked not with you know this particular you know entertainer, so that's I know difficulty. Exactly. I am Marcus Miles. Yes. I know difficulty. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, can I ask you a question? Sure. So were the classes, any of the classes at Howard that yes. were really the cla- The last class that I took with uh, Professor Don Marbury um, where we he actually had us put together a proposal. Um, and that proposal was something that I was able, once I graduated, I could send the people to be like, hey, here's a concept out there that might be of interest, you know. Um, and that was that that class was in, was 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 definitely um, uh, and it was the actually I think I was in the first class that he did. I was his first, you know, um, class um, teaching that particular class. I forget the name of what it was called, um, but he also brought in other people he had worked with in the business um, to talk to us. And we were able to ask them questions about the business and things that we can expect and all that. Um, so I think that was the that probably was one of the best best classes that I took um, at Howard. Um, <clears throat> uh, of course, you know, your other 
your technical stuff, cinematography and editing and screenwriting and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of just having, you know, taking something where it's like you can use that specifically, you know, once you get out, that would say that that particular class. Okay. I mean, your skills basically. You look, you there for an education. You know mm-hmm. that. But when it get, it's not until it gets applied. When yeah. It get the shit gets real. Yeah. That's what it's like. You know, we. What have you learned in your f- few years? It's like, yeah, you can learn, learn, learn. But if you ain't ready to apply it, when mm-hmm. it comes time, that's on you. But like that's you why said, I always tell students too. It's like when you're in school, always intern. Like especially in the summertime, if you got, if you're sitting at home. And it's the summertime and you don't have someplace you can go and, you know, work for free or either make a little bit of money or do something that's going toward the goal of what you want to do when you get out of college and you're wasting time. And so even when you're in school, you know, if you can find the time to time management and, and able to intern, then it's important. It just makes the process when you get out of school that much easier because now you have something on your resume that's in relation to what you want to do instead of like you working at, you know, the grocery store but or you're you working at. In, but you're based in reality. So it's like, you yeah. know, the reality of it, because no matter, I, I would be, it would be safe to say no matter what class you had, mm-hmm. when the reality of it came, it's a little bit different than what the teacher spoke. Absolutely. About. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had like two, like I, I, I interned a lot when I was in school. So, it's that Did you had those moments where you're sitting there like that bullshit they told me in class this is not high they didn't tell me it was gonna be like this <laughs> yeah like you know they don't tell you about like if you're working on some place and you're required to go get a uh, coffee or whatever i remember working on something i was interning one summer on this show pa intern i guess uh called battle dome and <clears throat> my first day i just showed up and the production coordinator was like all right so there's like 50 gates outside and there was these orange gates like if you guys mm-hmm. have been seeing wwe wrestling mm-hmm. those those gates that the fans stand behind mm-hmm. there were 50 of those outside and this was at the sports arena and he wanted us to pull those all out and paint all of them silver and i was the thinking, la like, sports arena yes <laughs> and i'm thinking where uh t money uh terry cruz was one of the the yeah. warriors on that show and I'm looking like, are you serious? I had on my brand new Air Force, white Air Force Ones. Ooh. At the end of the day, those things were silver. I was so salty. Oh, But I was like, this is not what you're te- they're teaching us in school. That we got. I'm in school to be in production. Yeah. I'm painting these gates. You had this idea. You're going to your first day of job. But you got your new, you got your nice little outfit on to work in the yeah. office and do what you learned to do. And now I'm getting coffee and paint. And like, the best part of it was I had went out of town and came back during that time we're paying the gates this guy drove up in his car hispanic uh, uh fella drove up he had this baby in the back seat and he was like hey Holmes, you know how can i get a job with you guys and like the guys that i'm with were like Mish. and you go down the down the ramp to the sports arena and go ask for this dude and, mm-hmm. and we weren't thinking anything of it yeah i go out of town i come back this dude is uh turned into like a key pa this guy's telling people what to do. I'm like, who is this guy? And the guys were like, you remember the guy who came on the car and told us? That's him. I was like, I'm in college to be in entertainment. And this dude off the street just got this job. And he's telling them what to do. I, at that moment, I was like, this business is all about who you know. So when I'm that, that was a summertime. I get back to school. I'm like, kind of what you were saying. Like, yeah, I'm learning this, but. I've seen some things and how things work in the world. So, and it went, you got a um, teacher sitting there telling you something. It's like, no, no, it yeah, ain't like, like that. Like, tell man. them about the people that just get the job off the street that don't, you know, or the people who, uh, you know, you got to go get this coffee or you got to go do this and do that. So, that, right, that was just, I couldn't believe it. Because going to get coffee is not in one book you ever read, huh? <clears throat> no. <laughs> going to get coffee is not in one book. Or painting your Air Force One. Uh, even silver. from a sports standpoint, logging, uh, logging sound and, uh, cutting highlights and all that kind of stuff, or the stress of trying to m- make a highlight uh, when the Monday Night Football game is getting ready to go off. That stuff's not in any books either. So these are all things that you've got to, you know, learn while you get the job. You so. learn on the on the hustle. You learn. Yeah, and, and yeah. That's <clears throat> that is. Um, I, I, do, I I gotta make a comment on it real quick, only because that is uh, something that you just said has always impressed me. When I watch a game, and at the very end of the game, like say the Final Four. 
as the credits are rolling, they're showing all the highlights from the, the game that just mm -hmm. aired. I'm like, who the hell put that together so, so damn fast? They're in the and truck. The music and everything. Like, perfectly. Some situations there's an edit, and they're in the edit. They're taking in all this stuff, and they're cutting it and turning it around. I've had situations where I'm in the edit, and we've had to, like, run the open of the show. Like live out the edit band, you're hoping like the avid doesn't crash because it's going from your avid into the control room out to the world, and then people stand back from the keyboard like put your hands up, don't touch anything. Um, in that case, from a game, you have a thing called EVS, which also known as Elvis. You have an Elvis operator who's back there, and they're just clipping off highlights from the game. In some situations, they could add music. So there's somebody that's there, and they're creating this thing with what's called a rollout, and they're basically compiling the best moments of the game. So being in a truck environment too, like in live TV, it's stressful. There's a lot of cursing going on, a lot of people hollering at you. <laughs> you know, so that's what I'm saying. It's not very it's not if you have a certain temperament, it's not for everybody. So like, your first time getting cursed out, like, what the fuck you told me? He just cursed me out. Like, it Yeah, no, like screen like it's just you just gotta know that that's the that's the situation in live T V. Mm -hmm. Um it's the, we just did the celebrity basketball game for B E T mm -hmm. and like we had some PAs and APs who had no live T V experience, no live sports experience. So I was explaining to them what the situation is going to be like in the truck um, with the um, uh, the graphics person. And so when the actual game started, they were like deer in the head, like, like, like oh, my God, oh, my God. The director's hollering and yelling. like, the, And so it's not something that people necessarily experience, you know, especially from a scripted or unscripted world like documentaries or in reality. Sports TV is way different. But the beauty of it is once it's done, the live stuff, once it's done, it's done. And then you are finished and you moved on. So, what is your favorite um, sports experience? It's at, at least you've been to a lot of, you've seen a lot of things. My favorite sports experience: Super Bowl, NBA Finals. I don't know. I've been I've been to eight Super Bowls. Damn! Really? Oh my god! I'm so jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to eight Super really? Bowls. Really? When are you on the ground? You were you were, were you on the field? <laughs> I was on the field this last Super Bowl. I couldn't see Beyonce because I was on the other side of the field. Oh, we're sorry. And then they, they cut the they cut She's the not jumbo, sorry at all. They cut She's the jumbotron off. They cut the jumbotron off, and we were there. And then they my, cut it off? My, oh, my God. On that side that okay, she's on. Okay, on this side. Okay. okay. And they had the uh, just the Super Bowl. Like, if you see the first scene when she's wearing out dance, yeah. they had the Super Bowl 50 logo right there. So that for TV, that looks okay. better yes. than seeing her. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was on that other side, so we had to do this to look. And then after uh, – after halftime, my uh, buddy who was a producer I was with, um, working with, he is producing, uh, he produced the Tell of Two Cities, and he, uh, um, <clears throat> his oh, friends. Dallas, San Francisco thing? Yeah. Oh, so he's okay. he's tight with the uh, DeBartolos now. So he's like, let's go sit in the Bartolos box. He, they're like, <laughs> invited us up. So we went up there and watched the rest of the game from. From the DeBartolo box. DeBartolo box. And they left after the third quarter. <laughs> so it was fun. That's, so we were, <laughs> that. That yeah. my friend is a hell of a story. You so that might be that might be I didn't think about it, but yeah, that might be one. You sat I, in the Debartlow box me, without the Debartlow. Me, my, me, my, <laughs> they said, left. Oh yeah, maybe I guess that is a good story. Yeah, they left right right when third quarter was happening, and me, my buddy Anthony Smith, the producer, and uh, um, Dallas Clark and Dallas Clark's two kids were sitting in there. Just doubt the. Dallas Clark. Yeah. Yeah. Just the catch, sitting. Dallas Clark. The catch, Dallas Clark. Yeah. yeah. Just sitting in there. Hey, Dallas, what's going on? You yeah. Want some chicken fingers? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a hell of a story, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, when the Eagles go to the Super Bowl, and it will happen, so don't say anything. But when Ooh, the Eagles go to the Super Bowl, T.O. <laughs> T.O. and Donovan coming back. <laughs> T.O. and Donovan coming back. <laughs> I'm calling you. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm calling you. I'm going with you. Just Donovan you and you know. Here's the thing, though, about that, which is the, uh, the myth, everybody. Like, we don't have any ticket exactly. hookups <laughs> at all. We, the myth. Get, Look, I can't hook you up, oh, no, Kelly. Okay. Well, I'm you telling get, you 10 oh, years from now. I'm telling you, you I cannot hook you up, Kelly. You get tickets if you work. Here's how NFL works. You get tickets if you work on game day. Um, you get, yeah, if you're working on game day, you get two tickets. Um, and if you want to buy tickets, you can buy tickets at face value of face value. Shit. Yeah, Are you so serious? They give you a discount. Damn, discount. You can't even get discounts. There's no discount That's why for regular it's a season games. Dollar industry. It's like Disney. we don't give discounts. So here's what happens. <laughs> no one can get it. No one can get a discount. Take to Disneyland. Like, this is what happens <laughs> during the um the season if you want tickets. You have to talk to the ticket people at the league. That you give them your credit card information, and then they 
respond back with your tickets and your credit card ran. They don't even tell you how much it costs. Mm. So you got to be like, oh. all right, this is where I want to sit. Oh, that's me. And then, oh, wait. So, <laughs> You're like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't mean, I ain't mean that. I didn't game. mean that. T- I didn't want that game, and I didn't want that ticket. I'm yeah, in general. You're like, all right, I want to sit in. I want to sit in. general, in the, I wanna, damn. I want to sit in the 200 section. You're like, all right, here's the 200 section. This is what we got. Boom. Here's your senior, your credit card. Oh, no, not the $200 section. I want the 200 <laughs> section. So, no, there's no NFL does uh, not provide any, you know, well, <laughs> man. no discounts. How man. do you think we're a $4 billion business? Because, well, we don't spend any, we don't give up anything for free. Man, yeah. NFL's no joke. And so you went to, and just because I just got to ask, you went to one where the lights went out? Yeah, I was at the, 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 the game in New Orleans. When, the, when the Saints lost. So that was, uh, no, the Saints didn't lose. No, not the Saints didn't lose. No, I'm sorry. Not the Saints lost. The one where the lights when, went out. When just, the 49ers lost. Yes. And, Ra- and the won Ravens won. Yes. The, <laughs> yes, when the lights went out. Yeah, I was there. New Orleans is a good Super Bowl city. Super Bowl should be in New Orleans every year. It's a great Super Bowl city. No, it is. There's a the, lot to do in New Orleans. Because in everything is right there. Exactly. You can get drunk and you don't drive I walk anywhere. back from the... <laughs> I walked back from the game with uh, uh, Jamie Sharper, and my feet hurt so bad because you couldn't. There's no cars could go to the stadium. My my stadium was at the Hilton at the River River. Oh my God, you were right on the river. Yeah. Yeah. So I walked all the way back. My feet hurt. I got back, got in my hotel room, went to bed, and I woke up the next day at like one or two. It was a long day because <laughs> during that point I worked on game day morning. Game day morning Ooh. was it was like an eight hour show. Yeah, game eight day. hour live show on Super Bowl Sunday. It's wow. a long time to watch football. Yes. But- <laughs> are you, real quick, are you going to do anything here for the uh, LA Rams now that they're here? Um, I actually am I'm trying to put my ha- name in the hat to do some field producing for uh, news for NFL because um, the uh, Rams are opening their facility in Agora. So I was just telling, talking to the managing editor because I live in Chatsworth. And he's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's right down. It's close. I'm like, exactly. It's close. <laughs> exactly. So I can be right there when you guys need. And then uh, another Howard alum, Steve White, she is going to be covering the Rams, NFL Network analyst. So that's my guy. So I'm trying to get in. And he's based here. He's based here. Okay. So, you know, I can be his producer while he's covering the Rams. So that's what we're politicking. I'm hoping. Politicking and keep yeah. it home. Keep it Howard. Keep yes. it at home. Because who you know gets yes. you the job. Yes. We've said this before on the Bison Chat. Who you know gets you the job. What you know keeps you there. Exactly. Any final advice for our listeners? I think one of the main things you just touched is, well, I guess, which is the motto. Um, yeah, it's who you know to get you the job and what you know that keeps you there. Um, <clears throat> I can't stress enough to uh, intern, intern, intern. Get as much experience as you can while you're in school so that when you do hit that person that you know, they can be confident enough to say, oh, okay, this person – they may not have a lot of experience, but they at least attempted to do some things. If they've, they've had their hands, they've had their foot in, you know, in a, a little bit of activity, so that I feel comfortable being able to recommend and refer them for something. And intern may mean for free or very little money. Cause yes, I know some people think that when well, I'm interning, I'm supposed to be paid a handsome. <laughs> well, in entertainment <laughs> business, yes, a lot of times it's for free. I remember some students in the school of B who were like, "Yeah, I'm interning for the summer at such and such," and they got a car and they got the company that's giving them a, <laughs> a apartment, and you know they getting paid. But my interns weren't the, exactly the same, so that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it may not be. It may not be. But may not think, be you gotta think money. long. You gotta think long term. Yeah. All right, before we wrap up, we got this little thing called Running with the Bisons. It's random mm-hmm. questions. They really, you know, just crazy rapid fire questions. They have nothing to do with the entertainment industry, but you things we just. Bison, yeah, we just think, bison, <laughs> bison, yeah. <laughs> Damn, man, I have an empty glass. Oh, my God, what is wrong with me? Wait, uh, what? How many, how many shots have you had so far? I've only had two. What are you, what are you, what are you implying when you say that? Asking me, like, with, with guarded, with guarded, also oh, yeah, guarded. How many have you had? How many have you had? Empty. That's what uh, you're I'm aware. That's all. Um, Marcus, um, to answer the question, yes, you'll say marked. And for no, you'll say unmarked. Mm-hmm. I'll run these questions by you. They're fun. I think they're fun. Okay. <laughs> you may not. Who knows? But we'll see. Um, let's go with it. Skydiving. Oh, unmarked. <laughs> Going on a blind date. Marked. 
flown in a helicopter. Unmarked. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I'll just tell you anything that has on that one, anything like. with me being in the air. <laughs> that's not an air. Yeah. I'm going to tell you now. I think we're done with all the air questions. <laughs> um, skinny dipping. Unmarked. Had to pay a fine in the past six months. Yeah, marked. My, my wife paid a ticket for me, I believe. I think she sent something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's your wife. That wasn't you. <laughs> well, you know, she, yeah, if I, for, I forget, then, you know, yeah. them bills yeah. are come. So my wife. Witnessed the shooting. Witnessed the shooting. Uh, marked. A lot of marked on that. A lot of marked on these topics. Yes, uh, bison. 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 So many people said yes to this question. I witnessed the, the shooting hell? in front of the tower, so yes. You know, we want it always to seems to happen in front of the towers. Um, <laughs> owned your dream car. Uh, unmarked. Body piercings. Unmarked. Tattoos. Unmarked. And That's literal. And literally, <laughs> my favorite and the last question. Manscaping. Manscaping? You mean like going to the nail shop? <laughs> no. That's what I said too. Where I was like, um, no, it's when you um, go to your nether regions and shave all the hair. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Unmarked. He didn't even say unmarked. He <laughs> no, said, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. No, 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 that's no. the. <laughs> no. I, These questions weren't mine, but I'm just saying this is, this is what this is what I gotta give. You know, I'm a host. I'm just a host. I'm the, I'm the yeah. talent. Here. You know, um. <laughs> I think I'm easy talent to handle. So, but yeah. Um, and on that note, <laughs> on that note, that is all the time we have. Man, what? Um, again, what are you working on? Any things you got to plug? Things that you're working on? Um, currently, uh, as you mentioned, I I just finished doing um, Inside the Label. I produced the Terror Squad episode, so we're waiting on uh, Crossing the Fingers BET uh, Green Lighting of season two. Um, independently, I'm working on a, a documentary. Um, that looks at the history of black stunt performers in Hollywood. Um, I've been working on that for quite some time. Uh, I've interviewed folks from Whoopi Goldberg to Lou Gossett Jr. Um, I've also interviewed Bill Cosby. Uh, we're now recently. Oh yeah, not recently, but right after the. Right before all of the situation stuff happened, Bill Cosby was the is the reason why there's black stunt professionals in Hollywood. So, we interviewed him for that, and so it's now tough because it may have to hit the cutting room cutting room floor. Um, but we've been working on this project for a while now. Um, I'm actually working with uh, my producer Noni Robinson, who um, her father. Uh, uh, Ernie Robinson was one of the first black pine uh, stunt performers in Hollywood. So this all came about because um, there's this thing that happens in Hollywood where back in the day they used to paint uh, stunt professional, white stunt professionals down mm-hmm. in blackface uh, to double as black, uh, yeah, uh, black uh, uh, stunt performer or black double the uh, uh, the black actors, and so um, <clears throat> these stunt performers had to fight to get into the business. So we've been documenting they uh, are there's a possibility now that they're going to be uh, getting an honorary uh, Oscar. Um, wow. Going to uh, the Smithsonian is uh, their new uh, African American museum is going to have an exhibit of the black stunt performers. So we're going to be documenting them going there, trying to have them meet President Obama before he's out of office. Um, uh, also working with um, Cecilia Peck, who is Gregory Peck's uh, daughter. She is a uh, part of the production now as well oh, so wow. that has you know has opened a lot of doors because Gregory Peck uh, was a uh, president of the Academy at one time and fought for a lot of diversity issues so um, it's a great project it's been, That's all right. it's I didn't been know that. a labor of love for uh, quite some time and so we're finally seeing that light at the end of the tunnel with that so yeah um, and in closing I have to ask you to give us your best HU call H U, you know. How can we reach you? Uh, you can. Or do reach you want to be reached? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, like, I don't want. It'd be funny well, if somebody said, "I don't want." Hey, hey, he he can't reach. give out tickets, so don't want to call him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, how can you reach me? Um, you can reach me on. I guess I'm on Instagram, brother Marcus. You can reach me at yes. Twitter at Miles Media Group, or you can also email me at info at themilesmediagroup.com. Man, it's been a great show. 
I, I, I mean, I'm not drunk. I am balanced. <laughs> I've totally enjoyed this. It's been informative. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, bison, bison, bison. Anybody wants to get their last shots in? Uh, <laughs> as they show y'all. Because um, that's who I am. I'm just, I'm just helpful there. It's been great. Um, please look for the Bison Chats every Monday on iTunes. Feel free to post your comments, questions, uh, nasty remarks, or whatever on Twitter at KRG Bison Project at, and using the hashtag Bison Chats. Um, another shout out to Eric L. Powell, a.k.a. E-L-P-J and J. Blocko, who provided the Bison Chats theme song. Chris Pry, our amazing social media coordinator. Diamonique Drummond, our Bison Chats intern. Also not a bison, and I'm scared she's going to shoot me for saying that, but she is from Philly, and we like her. Kyrie Jackson, present bison. Um, thank you for coming in as an intern today. And as always, to our esteemed producers, Daisy Alfonso and Kelly R. Griffin. Again, I'm Rod Email. You can find me at Bison Chats Host at krgbisonproject.com. And if you wake up, people, you got half a chance. I'll see you next week on The Yard.